to Ska 2018. Sky out there is bleak, so it's like typical Finnish weather for, you know, summer festival. So we, here we have some random dude from some random band who has been, you know, playing instruments for more than 30 years. So who are you exactly and why are you here? Uh, I'm Gene Simmons. I'm from Kiss. No, 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 no wait. Let's do it again. again. Wait, uh... Can I see your ID, please, sir? Um, sugar. Oh, yeah. That's the band that actually invented the so-called math metal, can we say? Not myth, you screwheads. This is talking about really technical stuff, and you basically uh, created, uh, more or less, uh, accidentally, the genre called gent, or is it Swedish? The <laughs> end. Uh, first of all, uh, we're very sorry for creating that genre. Uh, we <laughs> we didn't intend to. Our bad. Uh, no, but it, it's it's actually uh, I think it's a misconception that gent thing. I think it's kind of hilarious. It's our lead guitar player Frederick uh, being drunk back in the day, talking to one of our old school fans, trying to explain what type of guitar tone we were always trying to get. And he was desperately trying to say, oh, we want that j -j 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 -j. And that guy's like, what's he saying? Is that a Swedish word? Must be. Sounds like j -j, maybe gent, maybe something like And that's where it comes from. Really? Yeah. But you... Drunk you, misunderstanding, as always, with Mushuga, you know. But, I mean, you've been creators of your own kind of a unique sub-genre of sub-genres. And you've been doing so long, I mean, like, more than 30 years yeah. by now and you are still basically figuring out how to play that weird ass core but what is your own definition of your music um heavy experimental music <laughs> kind of a progressive with a uh, well i don't care if it's progressive or not it's heavy and that's the most but I, but the thing is uh, trying to define things it, it, like you know either it gets into that Math, metal, gen, cyborg, whatever, a subgenre type of deal. That's for other people to decide. We play aggressive experimental music, and that's basically it. But you've been also uh, getting, you know, uh, this kind of a Grammy Award kind of, uh, what you call it, uh, suggestions or recommendations or whatever. Mm -hmm. And even though you never kind of broke the mainstream barrier because your music is not most easy to approach, why is this? Because it's not mainstream music. It's music not made for everyone. It's not something you hum along to. It's not something that sticks in your head straight away. It takes adjustment for... I mean, it's not It's not music for casual listeners going to the gym, uh, drinking their smoothies and at five in the morning going, you know, going into crush numbers at a bank. We're not that type of band. We're not Avicii. We're not... You know, Madonna. We're not. We're not even the equivalent of us in metal. You know, so so I would say that. You know, I'm amazed at the success we've been having. I mean, our last album came in. I don't know, 12 on the Billboard in the U.S. And for this type of fucking music, I would say that's way more than we expected. You know, <laughs> so. Yeah, I was reading those those things. You know, just to get a little bit of. Uh, background information I'm regarding I mean I mean yeah. I saw you first time in I think it was uh, some spring 1995 when you were doing I guess machine head yeah. warming up in oh, in Tavastia yeah. yeah Tavastia yeah yeah Back yeah, no, the day, yeah I mean I was like 19 years old and I have never ever before even heard you guys and like these guys are creating something that goes way out of you know boundaries mm -hmm. so to speak and you're still on this road what keeps you you know keeping that road even though maybe you sometimes go off road Mm, I would say that probably uh, the reason we're still on the road is with that we are able to be on the road. And what I mean by that is that um, our first and foremost, like being a bunch of guys from like in the sticks up north in Sweden, we've never been in a part of a real, like growing up as kids, we weren't part of any partying culture or any, any Stockholm sound scene or anything. We were just like messing around on our own, which meant that for us, the most important thing ever being in this band has been the exploration of music and what we can do together. And as long as it feels like, okay, new challenge, challenge accepted, we made it. Are we still having fun with this? Hell yeah, let's go. So as long as we feel that we have a creative direction that uh, the five of us can kind of 
agree upon and feel that it's worthwhile and that we're taking it someplace and not just stomping around on the old ground, then I think that's the key to the to why we're still doing it. I mean, that's the whole focus. You know, it's been the sole focus all the time. And as long as it keeps being the sole focus, I think we'll be around. The day that we start to, like, look at other things apart from our creative process as the most important th reason for being in a band, the band will be dead. Do you ever, you know, be afraid of that you will end up in a dead end considering how... Uh Tight knit your path of this sharp genre of sharp genres is. Here's the beauty though. If we make a straight 4 4 rock ballad album, like Kiss or like ACDs, that would be fucking unexpected. So there's always places to go. <laughs> so you are all about being kind of uh, full of surprises. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think that we, I, I hope so, but I think that we keep our sound pretty. It's not like. <sighs> We we evolve as every band does, but if you listen to the old Rushug albums, what I think we are most proud of is the fact that you can pick out that this is Mushuga and you can pick out that this is Mushuga, but it's not really the same. <laughs> so we keep the tone, but not exactly the entire like composition of it, you know. And as long as you know that happens, we're all good, you know. You also have evolved, in a way, uh, to a pace where you have your own custom-made uh, instruments, yeah. and you are not playing with regular, you know, five, I'm um, sorry, six-string, six-string, you know, yeah, yeah. five, five-string bass, but I mean, like, what's the deal here? Do you actually need that specialty, or is it, to be honest, a little bit of a gimmick, or... What is the case? M m m might be a gimmick now for certain bands, but... Honestly, when we started out for the eight string, we looked towards the four string because we were like, it wouldn't it be cool if we had a guitar that worked like a bass so we can play in unison and do some real neat stuff. And we kind of got rid of the idea. But then we talked to this guy building guitars in Sweden, Fredrik Tarnquist of the Nevborn Guitars. And he was like, dude, I, I think you would, you, know, you would love to have an eight string. So we we're like, yeah. He's like, yeah, tr try this prototype I have. So me and Frederick brought it home, and that was before the Nothing album in 2002, which was the first one with the eight strings, and it totally changed the way we wrote music, composed music. And so it's very much not a gimmick. It's just that we need all the strings to play the stuff that we used to do, to be having the scale and the scope. But what happens is when you go from a seven string, a six string to a seven string is not that big of a difference because you play the power chords the same way still and all that. But when you... Go down to the eighth, you find a new dynamic and a new tone that kind of inspires you to do new stuff. So it's like, wow, what can this do, you know? So for us, it was a way to find uh, a new tone, basically. So we needed to go there to revitalize what we were doing back in 2002. And I would say that it was pretty important because even though that album would have been made, the Nothing album, even if we didn't find the eight strings, I think that we might not have evolved to where we are now without the eight strings. So would it be a kind of a bold statement to say that you are beyond hipster of extreme metal? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're the super fucking anabolic hipsters. <laughs> so what inspires you these days now that you have pretty much achieved everything there is to achieve with this kind of music? Um, well, that's the thing, because when people say that, okay, now you've taken this screwed up, fucked up music that nobody wants to listen to, and you've been hauling it ass around, like, you know, 30 years all around the world, and people are still giving you the time of day, so uh, what's next, like you said? And what's next is, is, is what I told you earlier, that, that creative spark, to, like, go back after touring an album, have a breather, and to feel the urge come, like the ideas spring up and like, because it's not like I sit down and say, no, I'm just talking for me, but you know, I don't sit down and say, oh, today's a good day to make a song, let's work. It's like, now we're supposed to write. So then I start to listen to, you know, the ideas that come out. And as our brains keep just tossing shit out, we're going to be around unless we just, you know, our bodies break up or anything like that. But it's, it's it, everything, all we've been talking about comes back to the creative process. Not the touring, not the nominations for Grammys, not the whatever, but, but the, 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 the five guys pitching ideas to each other. 
and like going, oh, that's fucking cool. And then I pitch something and the other guys go, oh, that's fucking cool. And then you start, you know, being friends, puzzling music together. That's the beauty of it. So if you like mathematics, if you like instruments, if you like anything at all and you figure out challenging yourself, go for Mezuga, right? Yeah, no, go, if you like confused, bearded, fat Swedes trying to hash out some semi-retarded shit on strings and drums and vocals, go for it. <laughs> no words needed to be had on this fine description. Thank you very much and hope you have a good festival, good Thank touring. Kitos. Kitos. Skull and bye. <laughs>